amongst several different niches. Actually, urban farming being one of my niches because I don't own a farm, I don't have a lot of land. Um, I actually have these same, well, these horses, the horses, but they're a stable, but my chickens are actually in my backyard, which is, you know, on less than an acre property. So, um, pretty cool stuff. And then also, I've worked with numerous different brands um, and built over 10 million members' lists amongst those as well. Um, so, lots of cool things in the last few years. And so, again, it did happen. Um, this is kind of from my personal website here. You know, I tip people now, what do you do? I had to build email lists and grow businesses, um, which is uh, something I'm really passionate about. So you might not be in the list, uh, or excuse me, in the business of specifically building email lists, which is okay. You don't have to, because that's not what I'm going to talk to you guys about. Uh, what I'm here to talk to you about is what I've spent doing over the past several years, um, and how I've kind of come to where I'm at and learned what I have. Um, and those two things that I've done specifically are, for one, taking as much information as possible, learning from lots of different experts, um, and two, is building a plan. And so that's what we're going to focus on here today is uh, building that plan. <laughs> And so some of the uh, brands that I've worked with are companies like American Legion, if you guys ever heard of them, um, Red Bull, Tomatoes, so many universities. I'm um, actually, I think, uh, not in here, but we have someone from uh, Harvard University there. They're uh, one of the clients we work with, their medical program, and Journey Motorsports. Uh, and also, I've learned from a lot of different experts as well. And so um, there's a lot of people who write really, really great emails, um, build great content, have met huge lists uh, that I've spent a lot of time studying and mastering and interviewing and so forth. And so in this time, I did a lot of things right. Um, but I also did a lot of things wrong. Um, one of the things that I learned uh, amongst the journey is that the, the decision to actually integrate both social media and email marketing should be a no-brainer. Um, and here's why. First off, does anyone know this guy here? Oh. Face, okay, mm -hmm. we got one, yeah. So if you don't know him, uh, this is Jay Baird. Um, he's also a, a very well-known public speaker, marketing guru. I probably will not be using that term, but you know, he's a great guy, um, and he talks a lot about several different things. Right now he's talking about uh, hugging your haters, um, customer service, and so forth. But several years ago, he did a presentation on the similarities between um, email marketing and Facebook. Um, and I think that this actually applies to not only Facebook, but also all social channels. So if you look here, you can see, um, if you have an email subscriber, which they opt into your list and subscribe to it, it's the same thing as someone liking your page, or someone following you, or someone adding on Snapchat. Effectively, what they're doing is they're opting in to receive and see your content. Same, same thing. You look at unsubscribes, it's the same, or um, with the email list, it's the same thing, someone unfollowing you, um, as well as clicks are gonna be clicks, opens are gonna be your views and impressions, um, and again, your forwards are going to be your shares um, and uh, your retweets and things of that nature. Um, so it makes sense, right? It sounds like you know, it's kind of the same thing we're talking about here. Okay, now I want you guys to all go on this visual journey with me, okay? So you don't have to close your eyes if you don't want to. Um, I'm not going to do this my trip, but let's pretend that this is you or your brand, okay? Um, you have a super engaged Facebook page. You have over 500,000 followers um, on your Facebook page. You're super engaged. Every time you post your latest blog post um, for your company, you get people to go immediately to that post and read it. You get lots and lots of impressions. Every time you post a, um, uh, an offer, say you're selling something and you post to, to get people to, to buy right now, you get a thousand purchases right away. So this is super, super engaged, okay? You depend on this Facebook page um, for a lot of your revenue. Now, let's imagine that tomorrow you log in and Facebook is gone. You don't see it there, you can't log in, you don't know where to go, you don't know how to post anything, you have no ability to reach your, your fan base. Well, you probably look like this guy. And you're pretty sad. Your palms might start to sweat a little bit, and you're kind of freaking out, like, "Hey, man, how are we gonna, how are we gonna generate that revenue today? What are we gonna do? How are we gonna post our, our offers? And what are we gonna do?" Yeah, you might want to just go to Twitter, but what if the same thing happened to Twitter? Well, the reality of this um, is is pretty big. If you guys think about some of the deaths of the most recent social media platforms, like Vine, for example, um, which you know, Vine, R.I.P. Rest in peace. Um, you know, it's a great platform. But if you think about all the um, influencers, for lack of a better term, who built a huge following and who started generating revenue off of the content they put on that social platform. Then when Twitter decided to pull the cord, what did they do? Well, the smart ones, they went onto other platforms or they built their email list so that they had access to their fan base and to their, and to their uh, best customers. But the people who didn't, they kind of scrambled. Some went to Snapchat, some went to YouTube, but the majority of them did not, were not able to build the same magnitude of views that they once had and hence um, not be able to make much profit as well. And so for this reason, um, this is primarily why, I'm gonna grab some water here, but this is primarily why um, building an email list is so important. 
Um, it's just like if you ever heard the term, you know, don't build your house on rented land. It's the same thing. With social platforms, effectively, it's rented land. We don't own those, we don't control those. We don't know what Zuck's gonna do tomorrow if he decides that he's like done, he's retired, he's gonna close up shop. Obviously, that's not very likely, but there is possibilities of certain platforms that could go away, like Vine. Um, and so, and also different things happening, like the algorithms changing, or stories coming to Facebook and Instagram and to Messenger Day. And people on Snapchat are now like, wow, what do I do? Because I'm so confused, I don't know where to post my content anymore. And so things like that are the exact reason why if you're building your email list, you own that list. You can take that to any platform you want, um, any, any ESP or market animation platform, those are your email contacts, and you can send an email to them however you want, whenever you want, as often as you want, um, and you control that completely. So does it make sense, guys, to, uh, to use email? Hopefully I, I uh, nailed that one then. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm getting a little parched there. Okay. <laughs> so, we interviewed several marketers um, a couple years ago, and of those, um, we asked them kind of what their opinions were of email marketing and um, social media. About 60% of marketers said that they believe that email marketing outperforms social, where about 40% of those said that social outperforms um, email. Um, but if you really think about it, I think that email marketing is generally going to be better at driving traffic and direct conversions because if you really truly built your list, you didn't purchase it or anything like that, these are real people who really want to receive your content, then um, by being able to send things out to them and they're expecting, they should be expecting to receive that content and you can drive those purchases right away. Social is better at engaging with your audience because when you can engage with them on social, they can also have social proof, they can see other people engaging with them, um, and also you have possibilities of going viral. So, uh, you guys might know this guy, this is Derek Halpern, um, he's a popular blogger and has a podcast and he teaches people how to build courses online. And so he has a really large following, he has, oh we should clap right now just to make them so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so, at this point in time, this was uh, 20 years ago, but he had uh, 69 plus 1,000 followers on his Twitter page, which is Twitter was his most engaged social network. And so um, he decided to do a little uh, self-proposed test, if you will, and at this time he had about 100,000 followers on his Facebook page, or excuse me, on his um, email list as well. So he had 100,000 email subscribers, 69,000 Twitter followers. And so, you know, one of the things that he posts regularly is links and um, release of his latest blog posts. And so he decided to post it here on his Twitter and on his email at the exact same time and see what happens. Well, the results were that Within the first hour on Twitter, he received around 50 clicks to that blog post. Um, but on the email list, within the first hour, he received more than 1,200 clicks. Now, although his email list was bigger, that was still 24 times greater of a conversion on his email list versus on his uh, Twitter account. But the difference here is, you know, yes, his email list might be bigger. Um, well, I said that. <laughs> he generated more clicks. So the one thing, though, is that that doesn't necessarily mean that email marketing is all you should be doing or that it's only, it's, it's better that um, you know, one is greater than the other. Because most people don't open emails more than once. Um, usually if you open an email at all, you're gonna read it and then you're gonna either file it away in a nice folder, delete it, archive it, do whatever you do with it. Um, people rarely forward or share emails unless it's something like completely relevant to you, like a, you know, tickets to the George Soros concert tonight. Something like that. And on the other hand, though, social media gives you uh, access to a much wider audience that you might not already have. And so you don't own that audience. And so it's important to also use that because then you can have things that possibly go viral that our new people are able to learn about you and so forth. And so the solution, obviously, is to use both mediums to complement one another. And so how do you do that? Well, I like to say that you consider a you should consider a holistic approach. Um, and so this holistic approach, um, what this is going to do is allow your customer experience to be uh, in unison no matter where or how they're interacting with you. So if you have a physical you know, location, a brick and mortar shop, or if you're all online, or if you take phone calls, or if you only do emails, you know, however you're interacting with customers, they should have that same experience and feel that they can communicate with you and interact with you um, everywhere. And so whether they want to, for example, um, when I fly, I usually take Southwest Airlines. Um, last week or two weeks ago, I was going to um, South by Southwest, and I tweeted at Southwest Airlines a little selfie and said, you know, hey, I love Southwest. You know, just something funny because one of my friends had posted something about uh, their delay from United. And so no, no uh, offense against them or anything like that, but I was just like, hey, man, you should go to Southwest, and then uh, tagged them. Well, they sent me a, uh, a snap, or excuse me, a text, or a tweet back, 
I would sing certain music right away and said, that kind of dedication deserves a prize. They gave me a free movie on my flight, and also they um, DM'd me and asked me for my member number. They sent me this cool prize in the mail, you know, all their information on it was just really cool. And it was just something to build that brand loyalty, but you know, I could communicate with them there. I could also communicate with them via email. I get their emails all the time about my rewards program, um, as well as you know, when if I wanted to call in for support or something like that, it's that same experience. And so I'm able to communicate with them, and that's really what, what the goal is. On the other hand, one time I was flying last year to um, uh, Newark, New Jersey, to the airport, and I had a horrible experience. I had really, really bad. I, I landed like 1 a.m. in the morning. There was nobody around to help me. I couldn't find out where I was going. I had a bunch of heavy bags. And I tweeted at them like, hey, I need some help. Where can I find a help desk? No one tweeted back. And I was really upset. And I was really frustrated. And I was like, I'm never coming to this airport again. <laughs> because it was so frustrating. It took me forever to find out where I was going. Um, but you know, that's kind of the difference there. And so, um, how do you do this you know, when you're integrating these two together? Well, obviously the big you know, uh, key term here is going to be content marketing. So obviously you need content in order to be able to use the platform because if you're not sending out anything of value or no content, then why are people going to want to, to read or to look at what you have to say? And so let's first talk about how to use your social channels uh, to grow your email list. So there's several different ways to do that we're going to go over. Um, and then um, after this, in, in the ebook that I mentioned to you guys, I actually will give you guys more uh, in depth of how to exactly do this. We're going to cover a little bit of that here today. And so, one of the first things you can do, if you're not already doing this, is use Facebook's customizable tab. This obviously sounds pretty easy to some of you, but to others, you might not have known this is even available. But you can see here on the bottom right hand side, the little button says sign up. They have lots of different options for you to do here. You can say sign up, you can say learn more, you can say apply now. Yeah, there's many different things you can do, but having that button is important because it allows people to go directly to um, sign up for your, your email list. And not just sign up, but you want to be providing some content we're going to get to here in a little bit. Um, but So you know, make sure you feel like those buttons that you have available to you. Now, when you do um, use that button, you want to not just have it directly go directly to like a your website, for example, your landing page, or um, the cover page of your website, or even just the form to log in that's provided to you by the um, the ESP, the email service provider. Create a landing page that's specifically dedicated towards um, providing value um, and opting in somebody. And so the the goal for this and the, and the key purpose and reason behind it is because people are we're all like squirrels. We have so many different things striving for our attention. We're like nuts over here, nuts over there. There's a tree. There's a car. I don't know what to do. Where am I going? And in reality, it's like that's what it is like landing on most um, web pages because there's all these different links to click on. You don't know exactly where to look and what to do. But with a landing page, there's one purpose. You see here with Neil Patel, his purpose is to learn how he generated this many visitors in a month without spending a dollar on ads. And the goal is, yes, I want to learn that. And so that's his value. That's what he's selling. Um, but by doing this, I clicked through his Facebook page, and now I can sign up. He's going to get my email address right away. Um, and so you, know, you want to provide that value, and you want to give them purpose, but you also want to give them one thing to do, um, which is, in this case, sign up for your newsletter. Now, another cool, um, this was another self uh, generated test that I did myself. So last year, around January, actually, of 2016, Snapchat started getting pretty big, and I uh, started, I jumped on the platform for the first time, started hearing about it, and started, started getting a following. And if you're familiar with Snapchat, um, it's really difficult to find people and for people to find you. And so there's a lot of different um, options out there, different websites, third party that allow you to find people. And so I started growing my Snapchat following and posting on it every single day um, through those platforms. Um, and so uh, with that, I was like, well, you know, what happens if Snapchat, something happens with Snapchat, I don't want to go on Snapchat anymore, so I was like, I need these people on my email list as well. And so what I did is I would actually post my Snapchat videos that I did each day on my YouTube channel. Um, and by doing that, obviously, Snapchat is vertical, and so your video is vertical, and there's just two big black empty spaces on your video. And so I just went into uh, Photoshop, you can do this in Canva as well, and created this really, really easy, simple um, PDF, which was clear in the middle, transparent, and it had my Snap button on the left, and um, that my uh, website and everything like that on the right QR code uh, made my color, and then uh, used that for my YouTube videos. Well, I also made that my, my incentive for people to join my list. And so every time I had a new person add me to Snapchat, uh, I had a copy and pasted message I sent them and said, hey, thanks so much for adding me. You know, I'd love to give you my free YouTube overlay. Um, click here to download it. They would click there, they would go on the landing page, and then they would their email address, and then in, in, in turn, um, they would get this, this uh, PDF here, which would allow them to post their stuff on YouTube. Um, so within about six months or so, I got about 200 email subscribers, which isn't a lot, but when you're thinking of Snapchat and how many actual people I had to add me to Snapchat, it is a lot because it's nearly 
Um, so it was really cool to be able to do that. And I, I'm not actually actively doing this anymore because again, now I'm confused because I don't know where to post my story. So, <laughs> um, but that's another story. Um, so, you know, cool things like that, get creative, you know, with what you're giving away and, and try to make something also too relative and related to what you're giving. So another thing is to remind people. Um, this also sounds very like uh, elementary, but a lot of people don't do this or they're kind of afraid to do this. They're like, you know, we're posting this content. We have this exact schedule of what we need to post um, every single day or, you know, a couple times a day, whatever that looks like, um, or a couple times a week, excuse me. But um, don't forget to post and remind people to, to add or to, to join your email newsletter. Now, obviously, you don't want to just say, you don't have to just say, hey, join my email newsletter because the chances of people doing that are probably slim to none. Um, but you want to provide them some sort of value. So everything you post could have some sort of offer tied to it. Whether you're selling products, it could be like a discount, like Crocs here. Um, or it could even be um, like like 6UK here. You can see they're offering a discount voucher. But you could even do like a, um, like a blog post, for example. Like if you are, are really big on your blog and that's what you're getting the most engagement on, on your social um, channels, then post a blog and have that blog first land to a page that asks for an opt-in. They're not already opt-in. And with technology nowadays, you can have cookies that will not prompt people with that landing page if they're already subscribed, which is kind of cool. Okay, so obviously by doing this, um, it's going to deepen your bond with those customers because if you're doing email the right way, you're sending a welcome series. And so with that welcome series, um, it's, it's uh, kind of the first set of emails that you send out. It doesn't have to be daily, but I would recommend it to be closer together. All the rest of your emails can be far apart. Um, but because what happens is when people first subscribe to your newsletter, um, they are the most engaged with your brand, okay? These people, they, they know of you, they've heard of you, they just saw you somewhere, they downloaded whatever offer that you gave them um, or whatever that promotion was that you had to get them to subscribe. And so by, by sending them something, at least every, I would say every day is, is my recommendation, um, just those first seven days, which is usually a welcome series like, to your brand. Like you want to get them introduced to your brand, what you have to offer, um, and all it's going to do is help deepen, deepen that relationship that you have with them um, and help them become bigger fans of what you have to offer. Um, and then also to set expectations. So after that, you can say, hey, you're going to hear from us you know, once a month if that's all you want to send out, which is okay. Um, but again, you want to build that relationship first so that, for example, on the other hand, if they were to subscribe and you don't send anything for a month, they've already forgotten about you. They have no idea who you are. And chances of them hitting unsubscribe or spam is a lot higher because by that time, they probably already forgot about you. Okay, so let's take a look at an actual example from one of our customers. So this is Maingate. Maingate is a um, uh, manufacturer of, of NFL and sports-related um, apparel and uh, paraphernalia. So they make jerseys, like if you ever go to like, a Colts game or, or a Vikings game or something like that, they're making um, those jerseys um, and all that, th those different branded um, official merchandise, um, and they're the ones who, who are creating it and actually selling it out um, just under those license names. And so their goal was, excuse me, to um, utilize their um, social media channels to grow their email list. And so uh, the goal was to, to get, I think it was, let's take a peek here. So they wanted to get over, uh, well, I don't know what the goal exactly was of how many subscribers, I can't remember at the moment, but what happened was the first idea was to go, they had their training camps come up, okay? And with those training camps, they know they get people to attend those, and so we were going to try a text to subscribe promotion. And so people at the training camp could text in their email address, you know, to the keyword, and be able to subscribe to their newsletter and get a chance to win tickets to um, the, the first two games of that team season. Okay, but that kind of flopped. Um, within the first day, we didn't have a whole lot of signups. Uh, I think it was like 300 or so signups, which was not the goal uh, because the goal was, was to get a lot, and so. Um, but what happened was we were actually blessed by uh, getting social media involved here. So what happened was um, the actual NFL official photographers took a picture of that sign, posted it on the NFL Facebook page. Well, within doing that, within 24 hours, they had over 5,000 um, new signups, and within the, the entire length of the campaign, they had over 31,997 new signups um, to the entire campaign um, just by posting that text to subscribe on Facebook. So it wasn't even a link to, to subscribe. It was a, hey, you're looking at Facebook, now I want you to text something for a chance to win something that's related to, to what they're selling, which was kind of cool. And so um, you know, by doing that, they were able to, to significantly gain. And obviously now moving forward, um, we are using social media to do this as opposed to um, trying to put it out in a physical location if it doesn't make sense. And so, again, you've heard me talk a lot here today about offering an incentive or a gift. So this is really, really important. 
Um, and it's specifically important not only to offer that kit, but specifically what you're offering. And so, first thing is, you want to offer something related to uh, your business and to your company, okay? So, a lot of people are like, oh, well, let's just offer a $50 gift card, which is great. You're going to get a lot of people who want to receive a $50 gift card. You're probably going to get a lot of people to subscribe. But the value of those people is slim to none because the majority of people just want a $50 gift card. They don't care about who you are. They don't care about receiving anything you have to say. They just want a $50 gift card. Once they find out they didn't win, they're gone. You know, they don't want to hear from you again. But by offering something related to you, you're, you're building that value. You're, you're continuing to form that relationship. And so going back to the example with main game, they know that if people go to a game, they're going to likely, the likelihood there's a certain percentage who are going to actually buy tickets, or excuse me, buy um, merchandise, right? Um, and so by offering those free tickets, they're getting people to a game where they have the opportunity to buy merchandise at retail price, which obviously you know, is very expensive there. And so um, that went all the way back around to them. Um, and so you take a look here uh, with Post Planner, which Post Planner is kind of like Buffer. Uh, if you've ever heard of them, they, they allow you to um, schedule out your social media posts, okay? So what was their offer was a, a free copy of an ebook, which was relevant to, um, to their, their planner. And so the ebook talks about what to post for, for, um, for the holidays, but within it, it com completely used how to do it and use their product so that obviously it makes sense that if you're going to do this, you should use our product. Um, and so it's, it's again, it's related to what they have to offer. So consider your customer profile. You know, how, how are you going to offer something, you know, like what, what, what is your business and what, what can you possibly offer? Um, really, no matter what you're in, there's something you could offer. And so you really want to look at what is it that you're selling and what is it that people provide, that you can provide value with. You can look at even your most, you know, look at the last year, what was the most popular content? Um, if you're not sure, uh, you know, this content is actually a really, really good thing to give out. It can be free and it's really, you know, it takes you maybe, you know, a week or two to actually create something of value um, and you can give that out. And so there's a couple of cool tools. Um, if you've ever heard of uh, BuzzSumo, um, I didn't have a slide for this, but this is kind of a freebie here. So if you guys haven't heard of that, it's Buzz, B-U-Z-Z-S-U-M-O.com. And it's, it's a tool you can use for free. What it does is it allows you to go and look at within a certain time frame, for example, in the last um, six months, what was the most popular social, most popularly shared social media post um, for a certain topic. So for example, if I went in and typed in email marketing, it would show me what was the most virally shared in the last six months. I can look at that, whatever the topic was, and okay, no, that is something that I should be writing about because that's something that people want to see, people are going to share that, and that's what I'm probably going to write um, my content on and around. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about how to use email to promote your social media. So there's also a lot of, a lot of different ways to do this, um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about here as well. Um, and so one of the easiest things you can do right away is upload your email list to your social media profiles. So you can do this on Twitter, you can do this on Facebook, you can do this on LinkedIn. Um, and why would you want to do this? Well, for one, it's going to help you get more followers on those channels. Um, but for two, it's going to help you build that community. You're going to be able to, as a marketer, listen and learn and understand better who your audience are. You know, so what kind of information they want to receive, um, more about their, their person specifically, um, but also you're gonna, it's going to help you build that relationship as well and build that community. Um, so let's take a look here as an example. So on Facebook, there's a couple different things you can do. For one, you can upload your list um, and you can suggest people to like it. So this is almost like a free ad. And so what happens is when, when you click on uh, more here on your page and suggest a page, what happens is it asks you, prompts you to pop up and to upload your CSV file of your list. And it'll give, instead of um, you having to go through and like click all of your friends on, that are on your Facebook and all of your friends' friends and everyone else's friends, trying to get them to get more likes, this will actually, everyone on your list, it'll show them what looks like you know, an ad, uh, an in-text ad, and, and suggest them to say, hey, this is people you know who like this page, you should also like it too. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything to do that. Um, and so that's a really great free way, and you can do it as many times as you want. And so it, they don't, there's, no, there's nothing I can find that actually tells you how long um, they continue to show those for, um, but I just usually will upload it like once a week and just kind of see you know, who's new on there that I can, can, I can get to like my page who's on my email list. And so this is what it looks like when you pop that up there. Um, and so you can choose uh, one of your platforms if you're on one of these, or you can just upload it from another uh, service provider as well. On Twitter, you can also up upload your list. You do have to have a Twitter ads account, but you don't have to actually be spending money or using Twitter ads specifically. Um, and so you create a Twitter ads account, you go to Audience Manager, and then you upload your CSV file here. Now once you do this, it allows you to create lead generation cards. Um, and so these lead generation cards are 
kind of like um, like opt-in buttons that you can create with an image and with a button that you can get people to subscribe. You can pin this to your page, um, and so that the first people per first thing people see when they get to your Twitter page um, is this this generation card, and they know that they can subscribe right away to uh, whatever it is that you have to offer. And this is again a little bit more about how to do that. Um, and so creating a campaign, going to lists, and uploading those. Oh, and then actually this is specifically talking about ads. So if you are doing some ads, you can add custom audiences. And so you can use this with Facebook as well, uploading your list into the ads account, and then if you want to retarget them, you can do that as well through all those platforms. And so Twitter does provide you a lot more good information about how to specifically do that. Um, and so they provide some cool infographics about what it might look like and, and what um, it might do, and so you can look into that some more as well. Um, and these, these are provided for you guys, these uh, presentations here. So, now actually, uh, research shows that social sharing uh, will boost your email click-through rates by 158%, which is pretty huge. So it's really important to have that social sharing there um, available. Um, so how do you do that social sharing? Well, have um, social options for people in emails. Um, so I can't tell you how many email newsletters that I receive that they don't have an option to share it. And I'll look, I'll, I'll like, if I want to share something on, on social media, I will try to do that. Um, and if there's no button, like, what do you do, you know? Um, and so you can do it many different things. Um, you know, some people like to put it up top. Like you can see this example here on the top right. Um, some people like to put it in the bottom. You can see over here. Um, you can have follow, so they can follow you. They know you have a social channel, but also you can have to share. Um, so all over the place. Uh, people ask me all the time, you know, where's the best location? Like, where should we put these buttons? Uh, in reality, it depends, which I know the answer sucks, but um, you should always be A-B testing. And so I would try all different locations, you know, try it for 30 days with your audience um, and see what works best. And then that's where I recommend for you specifically to put it. Now, another cool thing is that you can do uh, Click a Tweet, which is another free service, clicktweet.com. You can create a link that would, uh, someone can click on it and tweet. You can put that link directly within um, your email that goes out. And so, uh, whatever it is that you're saying, you can have this nice and easy here um, click to tweet, and people can click that, and then it'll automatically post a tweet. You can have your, and tag yourself in there, um, and also kind of create that, that social sharing, as well as that vir virality there as well. And you also, um, another cool thing that I actually just added in here uh, today was to create um, social groups. And so you think about, you know, like um, uh, a congregation, right? What do you think about? You think of a church, okay? And so what, what does that mean at Silly? But it means that every single Sunday or, or Wednesday or whatever day of the week it is, people get together at that congregation and they congregate, they talk. Your audience should be the same thing. Um, you should be able to get them together and provide them more value in addition to what you're selling um, and help them become, because ultimately they're users. It doesn't matter what you're selling again, um, but by you know, people who are in or doing the same thing, they, they like to talk to one another. You know, they like to um, network and they like to help build their own professional um, uh, person. And so um, one of the things I would highly recommend is creating a group that's specific for, for your people. I'm inviting them there. And obviously it's going to start small, but one of my friends, Carlos Gill, created this group called Social Media Masterminds Group. Uh, quick question, has anyone ever heard of this group? Okay, we got, we got a couple. Awesome. Great. Cool. Okay, so this is awesome. So this group, um, he started it last year again, uh, probably around February or March. Um, he started it. There was like 10 of us in the group. Um, now, today actually, I just took this screenshot this morning, it's got 3,000 members in it. Um, people are getting added to every day. I find so much value in this group, it's not funny. People are all marketers, I would recommend you guys to join it as well, um, and people are posting questions in there, you know, so it's like, hey, I want to do this, does anyone have experience with this? Or, hey, I'm really looking to do that, does anyone have experience with that? Or anyone in this area want to talk? Um, it's a great way to network and, and other people who are in marketing and who, you know, you're able to share and, and um, balance information ideas off one another. Um, and so, Obviously, this is a good place. Now, I'm in lots of other groups as well now uh, since then, um, and they're all different types of user groups, and so I would highly recommend creating something like this. Okay, so let's take a look at another example here. Um, so this is Red Gold, um, which they make ketchup. They are a huge, uh, they, they have tomato farms, make ketchup, and lots of other tomato type products, canned goods, and so forth. Um, and so their goal was they wanted to grow their uh, Facebook page. Now, they had an email list of uh, I think they had like 200,000 email subscribers um, within their email list. Um, so they had a lot of email subscribers, um, but they weren't on social yet, and they weren't really sure how to get on social. Now the majority of their of their um, people, of their subscribers, are an older demographic. Um, majority are female, um, and you know they, they are very very well connected with them. They get I think about a 30 something uh, on average. Uh, so they get a 51, excuse me, percent um, on average open rate. And so 
and super high. You know, what, well, what they actually are sending out, you're like, you know, well, how does a canned goods company send out emails? Like, what are they sending out? It's recipes. All it is is these recipes that are beautifully designed in an email template, um, and of course, all of them are using their products. Um, you know, as, as one of the products within those recipes. And so they're getting a ton of engagement here, and they know that, but they weren't sure how to get these people over to their social profile. And so what they did was they created a, um, a campaign that we called the Amazing Apron Campaign. Um, and what it was is if someone went from their email to actually go subscribe or like their Facebook page, that they would get entered into a chance to win this free apron. Which again sounds crazy. I mean, it's like, well, who would want to receive a free apron? Well, believe it or not, there's a lot of people who want to receive a free apron, especially from their audience. Um, it led to a 51% open rate. Um, within the campaign, um, they had over 22,734 new likes to their Facebook page just by doing this campaign. Um, and so, you know, for a month, they sent this out in every single email um, as, you know, hey, we're doing this free campaign right at the top, um, and people, people ate it up. Um, and so, you know, it's a great way just, you know, creating something fun like that, engaging your audience, and then getting them to interact with you. Okay, so uh, as we kind of get towards the end here, you know, one of the most um, unfortunate things is when someone wants to unsubscribe, right? Nobody likes that. Um, nobody likes someone to not want to see your content anymore. But just because they're unsubscribing um, doesn't necessarily mean that they don't ever want to hear from you again. And so HubSpot actually uh, was really, really creative in doing this. And if you're familiar with HubSpot, you know that their brand uh, presence in general is kind of quirky and, and comical. Um, and, you know, they try to have a lot of fun with it. Um, and so uh, if you ever go to try to unsubscribe from their email list, which if you're subscribed to it, you know they send out like five emails a day. It's kind of crazy. Um, but you'll see this video pop up here in this page. It says, we miss you already. And Dan Sully, who's um, their head of email, um, he, uh, and, and brand engagement, excuse me, um, he has this video here that automatically starts playing. And he says something like, you know, we're so sad to see you go, but we hope this isn't goodbye forever. Um, you know, we'd love to see you over on our social channels. And he kind of fake cries. And it's kind of funny, you know, look at it. Um, and then you have here, you know, you see down here, it says, we miss how close we used to be. How about a second chance? Um, and so, you know, think about that. You have the opportunity, if someone's unsubscribing, to create this page of where they're going to go to unsubscribe. So why not use it, right? And so maybe they don't want to hear from you five times a day, which I don't because I don't have time to read five emails a day from one from HubSpot. But I would not mind to see their information on Facebook and on Twitter because they do have really, really good blog articles. Um, and so instead of having to see those every single day, now I can see those when I want on my time, which is perfect for me. I'm still connected with the brand, but it's not necessarily intrusive to me within my inbox. And so um, this is a great opportunity here. And so the last thing I want to talk about, everything we talked about so far is actually free, which is kind of cool. Um, and so you know, all these things would not make you change your budget at all. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about is actually retargeting. Um, which, if you do have a budget and you are spending some money on marketing, um, for specifically Facebook or social media ads, I'd highly recommend you, you create a custom audience um, retargeting to your email list. The reason is, now, you will pay a little bit more um, via Facebook or Twitter or whatnot um, per, per lead, per uh, click, or per engagement um, with those people because you're obviously uploading a, a warm list. But the thing is that the conversions that you get are going to be 10 times higher than what they would be by marketing to a cold audience. And it's because these people are already familiar with you, they already know what you are, what you've offered. So this is really, really key if you're looking to maybe cross-sell or introduce them to another avenue or another area of your business. Um, and so literally you go in, you upload those lists. And another cool thing too is that you can even create custom lookalike audiences. And so say that you have you know, a list of a thousand people, right? And those thousand people are like your key, key customers. These are people who've bought something from you before. Upload that list to Facebook, and then create a custom lookalike audience. And they're going to find other people if their if their email address matches their social login. Then it's going to find out their profile, knows all this information about them that Facebook collects. And now you're able to create a custom lookalike audience. It's new people that you have no idea who they are. I mean, now show those people specifically your ads. Um, and so again, those conversions are going to be really high because they know these people are already interested in what you have to sell. And so, in closing here, um, obviously, you know, the research shows that um, spending by channel in marketing still wins, but it doesn't, like I said, necessarily mean that you should do one over the other. Um, and so, you know, the sky's the limit here, guys. You can go, you can get as creative as you want, and I'd recommend it and recommend trying new things. This is another example. Um, uh, last year, I took at an airport of a napkin um, from Southwest. And you can see here they have the text subscribe promotion. So, this is on a napkin in an airport. Um, sign up online or text your email address today. Um, and so, you know, if they're doing it, I'm assuming that, you know, if, 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 uh, they're doing it for a reason because they have a lot bigger marketing team than we do um, and are spending a lot of money on that sort of thing. And so, uh, sky's the limit, absolutely.
All right, guys, so uh, my name is Anthony Conichel again. I hope you enjoyed the presentation today. Uh, we have about 21 minutes or so remaining, so look at some questions. Um, and so, fire away. Yes, sir. So I was looking for a bar thing that we have my company, and one of the things that I struggled with is, um, I think we were a little too promotional. You know, in a lot of our emails, it was very much like, you know, buy this, and look at that, and you know, people don't know how to sell all the time. Mm -hmm. And so, what do you think the right mix of content to do to within each email, mm -hmm. as well as, like, say, all creative? So sometimes your email is just about an event or a topic or a feel good, right? And then you might say, just if I had, let's say, four emails a month, I'm making that up. Mm -hmm. Two of them would be non product related, two of them would be something else. Sure. Or do you think the email should have that topic? Okay, that's a great question. So, if you guys, did everyone hear what he said in this question? No. So, his question was, like, what, what frequency of like content, like direct sales, um, you know, call to action versus just providing like free value and free content should you put in an email or um, you know, how frequently, how often should it be in multiple emails and so forth. And so um, there's, there's generally speaking two different types of emails. You're gonna have broadcast emails, um, which is, you know, a lot of people have referred to those as like batch and blast. It's a big blast to a big group or segment or everybody on your list. Um, and then there's going to be um, the more um, kind of detailed segmented emails that go out. Now, either way, whichever one you're using, um, if you're using the term blast, like I'm saying I email blast, you're doing it wrong. Um, because you never want to just send out a big you know, list. It's like throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing which one sticks and saying, okay, that's the good one. You, know? you don't want to do that because um, you're hitting all these people with all these different things that's not relevant to them. The key to email is that the, the more personal you can get and the more relevant you can get to them specifically, the, the, the higher the engagement um, and higher um, success you're going to have ultimately. And so, um, you know, people people want to um, they, they want to be personal. They want everything to be personal to them. And so, um, specifically speaking to this, a uh, couple different things. If you've ever read or heard of um, the book uh, Jab 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk, it's a great book. I highly recommend it. Um, but he talks about um, sending out you know several jabs, which jabs are going to be providing value. Um, and then the right hook is going to be your direct sales call. You want to call to action. You want to sell them something. And so uh, this is a really good principle that, that we found a lot of success in. Um, and so you know you want to provide more value um, than you do asking them to make a sale. But that's not to say that you can't have um, a soft sale on everything that you send out. And then also on top of that, I would say that every single email you send out, you want to have one primary focus. Like what's that one magic bullet in your email? The one thing, and so a lot of people will, will come to me and say, "This is our email newsletter," and it's like a million different things. You know, there's like a calendar, and there's like these quotes over here, and there's this over here, and there's that over there, and a million things. And again, just like the web page, people get confused. People aren't sure where to go, and the likelihood of someone reading all that is slim to none. And so, the more the more centralized and focused your emails can be, the better. A good example um, is anyone here familiar with Kate Spade or some other emails? Yeah. Okay, so if you guys have seen those emails. They have, one, they have one focal point, right? It's usually a promotion or an offer of some sort, but they, they're one thing. And so that's kind of what I'm talking about. You know, whatever that thing is, have, have one thing. And if that means you have to send out emails more often, that's okay. Like, people are afraid to send out emails. So they're like, I don't want to be too intrusive. But if you're providing enough value, people don't mind you sending out that much email. Um, and like I said, when you're starting out, you want to start out sending emails closer together. I would, I would recommend once a day for seven days. Some people don't like that, maybe once every other day. And you don't have to continue that for life because you're gonna overwhelm your audience. But by building that relationship, by sending them that value, um, they're gonna find it a lot more uh, relevant to them. Um, and then also, too, you wanna link emails together. And so, for example, in that you could have, today this is our primary focus, um, which could be providing value about um, you know, something, uh, something related to your brand, um, just for lack of a better term here. And then you could, all, in, in that email, in that promotion kind of offer, you can say, look out next week for, you know, this and give them a little tease, you know, and so then, then they kind of are knowing, like, hey, I'm getting email next week, so I know that, they know to look out for it, and then also, too, they're looking forward to it because you're providing something of value to them next week as well, um, and so, uh, and generally speaking, I would say, you know, provide value, 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 and then try to run the right hook, but within the value, it can be something soft, so, like, it could be, you know, here's a value, it's a blog article, for example, and then at the bottom, you have something like, if you're interested in more information, click here, which goes to, you know, whatever you're selling, um, versus, Hey, here's what we're selling. Here's 20% off. Buy it now. This lasts, you know, until Friday. If you don't buy it now, then you're never gonna see it again. Sort of deal. So, does that help answer your question? Yeah. Cool.
Do you have any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Are you willing to look at some of our email? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. I would like to be first in line. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, um, yeah, I'll be here all day today um, and tonight and then all day tomorrow. Actually, too, I should mention this. So, um, so I work with Deliver. We are um, an email um, service provider. So we're a platform um, in the same space as like MailChimp or Comes Contact. Um, we also have marketing automation features, so in the same places like HubSpot and Marketo. So if you guys are familiar with any of those folks, and so tomorrow, um, I think at maybe 9 a.m., 9 30, I'll have to double check on that, but I'm going to do a, a demo of our software, so if anyone wants to kind of see what it looks like. Um, but but anytime today or tomorrow, I'll be, again, I'll be here all day. Please, you know, feel free to pull me aside and we can chat a little bit about what you guys are doing. I'd love to. Yes, ma'am. So is that your software, um, you communicate billing and like you can talk to about email you purchase, subscriber, you went to. Right, exactly. Yep, so so Elijah set up a campaign. So like for example, um, when someone subscribes might be the trigger, and then you can automatically send them that value to download, mm -hmm. um, whatever it might be, or if it's something maybe physical, it could be, you know, whatever that link is, wherever it goes. And then you can say, send out another email, you know, today, this day, this day, this day. Okay. Um, and, and you can also set um, look, it gets really in depth, but you can you can set triggers like if they open it, if they don't open it. Um, you can narrow the list down and send out text messages. You can send out direct mail pieces. So it, it can get pretty in depth um, depending on what you're trying to do. But yeah, specifically you can you can go from you know one email and then you have your your big list, which is you know everyone receiving you know this type of information maybe once a month. But then when people first join, they're going to receive this welcome series, which is going to introduce them to the brand. So yeah. Any other questions, guys? What's the name of your software? Uh, Deliver. D E L I V R A. Yeah, so um, the slides are uh, going to be available on the app as well as, um, I think Cheryl might send them out, but I know on the app you can go in and it takes you to Dropbox. And then all of our presentations um, for all the speakers are going to be in there for you. Um, but also, too, if you guys want to, uh, if you want my free ebook, and, and if you want um, to to get me to send you slides as well, I can send those to you guys. Um, but just email me here. This is my email address, and then um, I'll just forward you guys the ebook for you to read your leisure, um, as well as the slides if you like those as well. Okay. You have a question? Oh, absolutely. Cool, thanks. All right, guys. Uh, so, any other questions? Yeah, I have one. Yes, sir. What do you think the number one mistake? Good question. So, uh, I, I'd have to go back and say the number one mistake people make with email is sending a blast. Because, again, the the more the less focused you are with your email, the less people are going to care about it. Um, and so, and, and a lot of people too are like, "Well, I've already done that. So now what do I do? Like, you know, I've dug myself this hole. How do I get out of it?" It's not too late. You can start today and say, you know, hey, we're rolling out this great new thing, you know, and kind of get people, you know, tease them, kind of get much of it coming out, you know, at the end of April. And then, you know, send them a campaign that kind of leads up to this big release of thing. And then from there, you can start them off again. You know, so it's never too late because permission is perishable. Um, people subscribe to a list, but they're doing so many different things that they might have forgotten when they subscribe and they forgot about you. And you're also competing with, with their eyes for a lot of different things. Same thing you're doing on social as well. The difference is here is that you have access to sending things whenever you want. So um, you should have it within your email account. You should have many different smaller segments of people. So like these people specifically, like your your pets, right? Yeah, cat or dog. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So yeah, because people who don't have dogs or maybe they're allergic to cats, like they're not gonna want to hear anything about your cats, right? You know, and, or, and so by saying getting more personalized, like um, actually in this ebook here, I have some more examples of this to get a little more in depth. But examples can even be like the demographics. So like if you have an idea of like the age range, you can show images of, uh, for example, I'm trying to think of the company it is now, but they have uh, images of older people and images of younger people, and then it's segmented based off of their demographics. So like for me receiving it as a millennial, um, I'm going to um, relate more to seeing younger people than seeing older people and, and vice versa. And so it just helps me get more, um, more in tune with that brand. Um, and so that's definitely key there. So you know, start segmenting. And again, if you're not segmenting at all right now, start asking questions. People, they want you to be personal to them. Um, and so by asking those questions, it shows them that you care about what they have to offer. 
or what they, 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 you care about them, right? And so you can ask for information in, in some of your emails and say, you know, hey, we're updating our records. Or, hey, you can look at people who have not engaged in your emails in the last three months or six months and say, hey, we saw that you know, you're not in our emails or you're not enjoying the content. You know, we'd love to know, know why. Or, hey, we're going to, you know, stop sending you stuff. You don't want to hear this anymore. And people open that kind of stuff. They're like, wait, what is that? What? I, I like that stuff. I, I want to receive it. And, you know, and they'll reply back and, um, and say, hey, no, I, I still want to be here. And so little things like that you can do, and, and don't be afraid to because you're, you're not going to lose people. They're going to actually um, stick to you because you're, you're ultimately – it's kind of like that um, theory when you try to push away from somebody and they cling to you more. It's the same thing. So email is a big relationship. All right, so I do have a question on your urban font. How did you set – Start from scratch. Yeah. So I got an urban farming. Good question. Um, so yeah, we wanted uh, my wife and I wanted some chickens <laughs> in our backyard. And started reading about it, and then I was like, you know what? Like I'm already passionate about like um, social media and, and the internet and, and marketing, and so like how can I tie this you know hobby into between? And so um, started a WordPress site, uh, and then kind of went from there. So I kind of recorded and blogged about everything that I did. Um, and built up that way, and it also is like teaching other people how to earn a farm, so how to you know how to grow grow vegetables and things like that in a small space. So yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. So it, you know, there's so many different options and so many different things you can do to, to just continue to build that relationship and also to boost your bottom line. And so. sources. People don't use sources. Like yeah. where, do you, where do you get that content from? You, you need to talk to your consumers differently Absolutely. Where, than where they're at. Right? Absolutely, yeah. So. 
Boys, and again, um, I will be here. We have about five minutes left, so I want to give you guys extra time to go to the bathroom and get some coffee, stuff like that. So I'll be here um, the rest of the week. So please, I'd love to talk, chat, and give you guys some, you know, look at your stuff and talk more. So thank you so much, guys. Appreciate your time.